Okay, um, so we're going to spend most of today doing an exercise on how to create our own keys. Um, so in that exam, you saw some examples of some keys I made up, um, and those were indented keys. And so what I want to do here is just give you a very brief introduction on some things to think about as you make your own keys, and then you guys can split up into groups, and you can create your own keys uh, for some groups of species that I've got for you that I'll hand out. And so these are the slides that we already looked at for uh, lecture seven, uh, back before we started using dichotomous keys. So we already went through these up to here. So what I wanted to do, so that's where these are if you're looking for these slides. But what I wanted to do is just look through a few guidelines on keys. Um, so you've got experience using them, so that'll help you see what works and what doesn't. So you know it's real frustrating when you turn to a couplet in a book and it's only talking about the fruit, and you don't have any fruit and it's not helpful, right? So you've seen some things that are less than helpful. So when you create any key, and this can be for trees, this can be for any organism, come up with a title for your key and that's going to sort of define the scope. So your textbook there is Trees, Shrubs, and Woody Vines of East Texas. So that textbook is a key and its title tells you exactly what it's focused on in terms of the species and the geographic scope, okay? Um, you could have a winter key, you could have a leaf key, you could have a twig key. So you can specify your key by morphology, and then you stay within that scope as you develop it. For today's exercise, I've got little lists of like eight species on them, so that will be your scope. You only have to create a key for just that little list of species I'm giving. So I've already provided the species list for you today, but if you look in your textbook, it'll have an index of all the species. So you can flip to the back and see that list of species. This one sounds straightforward, but it honestly trips folks up a lot. It's a dichotomous key. Di means two. That way, that means you only have two choices for each couple. So it's real easy to get in the habit of putting three in there. But if you start doing that, it starts getting real complicated. It falls apart pretty quick. So make sure it's always paired couplets and make sure they indent. So one, one, then two, two, then three, three. So make sure you indent as you alternate them. That way it's just easy to see what the pairs are. It's less confusing. You wanna make sure they actually oppose each other. One should be the opposite of the other, right? And so if I gave you a couplet and it says, the leaf is greater than 1.4 centimeters long, that was one choice. And then the other choice said, the twig is brown. Those are completely different things. They're not opposites of each other. So what do I do when I have a leaf that's big and a twig that's brown? Now I could choose both of them and they're both correct. Or I have a leaf that's small and a twig that's not brown, then neither of them fit. So those don't oppose. So make sure you have leaf is larger than this versus leaf is smaller than this. Because then every leaf is either one of those or the other. Okay, there's no gray. Now, if you wanna put multiple aspects of morphology together, you can do that. Just make sure that they line up parallel to each other. So I could say leaf is larger than this and twig is brown, but then my other couple would have to say leaf is smaller than this, twig is gray or tan, give other colors it can be. And so that way I'm contrasting leaf size with leaf size, and I'm also contrasting twig color with twig color, okay? So it's still opposite, even though you've listed multiple aspects of morphology. Make sure you use the correct jargon. That's why we learned it. So instead of you having to try and describe elaborately some aspect of morphology, just use the correct technical term. That way someone can look it up in a glossary, know what you mean, and it's easy, okay? Use quantitative measurements. If you say leaf is long, leaf is short, cones are big, cones are small, what's big or small or long or short to one person may differ to another person. So use actual measurements. You can use inches if you want, use centimeters if you want, but use actual measurements. You can't completely follow this next rule, but do your best. Try to avoid negatives, okay? So instead of saying what something isn't, say what it is. And so that might be leaves are lobed, and then your other couplet is leaves are unlobed, okay? So you're saying what it is, you're not saying leaves not lobed. So try and avoid using negatives. Sometimes you're stuck and you kind of have to use them, okay? So if you're looking at oaks, leaves bristle-tipped. Um, so the opposite of that is gonna be leaves not bristle-tipped. So sometimes you have to use that negative. Uh, thorns or prickles present, thorns or prickles absent. 
So those are the sort of things you're looking at phrasing. But anytime you're talking about an aspect of morphology, leaf shape is deltoid, so triangular. The opposite of that is not necessarily not deltoid, rather instead you could list the leaf shapes that it could be. Okay, does that make sense? So try to avoid negatives where you can. Okay, the other thing that'll save you all time is you're writing these out. Some of you, you will get it in your groups and you're gonna start writing each couplet as the tree has, the tree has, that's implied, right? Someone's using your key, they know they have part of a tree, they know they're using your key to ID that tree. So if you find yourself writing the same thing to start each couplet, just quit writing that. It's assumed you're just wasting your time, it's not necessary. So often the best way to do that is start with the, the part of the plan, then list the morphology about it. That way you're not wasting any, any words there. So leaf is deltoid, twig, is scabrous, okay? So you list that part, acorn or you know, fruit is an acorn. So you're listing the part of the plant, then you're describing it, and that'll help you write just a nice efficient couple, okay? All right, check for dead ends and inconsistencies. So as you look at your key, if you get to some point, you're like, I can't go anywhere from here, there's a problem with it, you've done something wrong. One guideline is going to be that you should have about the same amount of couplets as you have species. So if you have a list of eight species, it's probably going to take about eight couplets to split out all eight of those species. There are two main ways you can try splitting them apart. One is you look at a list of species and there's one obvious weird species in there that doesn't line up with the others. So you look at a list and you're like, that one's a cactus and everything else is an oak. Peel the weird species off first. So come up with a couplet where one of them gets you the cactus, you know, and then the other one, you know, gets you everything that's not a cactus. So peel your outlier species off first, one at a time, get rid of them. The other option there is to look at it, and if you see kind of two logical groups, go ahead and split them out in half right from the beginning, okay? One thing people will try to do that makes more work than you need to work to work at this. So say you have a key and you've split it into two groups. Don't try and then subdivide those two groups simultaneously. So don't be working at group one and then say, now we need another couple that works at this other group. Just take that first group and split it all out until you're down to just those species and you've finished it. And do those in number two, three, four, five, okay? Then you're done with that first group. Then go to the other half. Now you know, oh, okay, so I'm going to number six. So I direct this one down to number six, then split up those species. So it's just easy for your brain to work that way. You're not trying to multitask between these two different groups and confuse yourself, okay? And you'll see what I mean as you start trying. And then of course, we've got the acronym KISS there. Keep it simple, sweet. So just make it as simple as you can. Make this as parsimonious as you can. And that's the best you can do. So any questions on constructing keys before we get going? 